what is Ripple Delete? It's a pretty simple and obvious concept where you're taking out sections, unwanted sections of your video or your project and moving everything over to the left as opposed to leaving a gap. Most of the time, you don't want a gap of nothing in your video. The more important question is, how do you Ripple Delete in DaVinci Resolve quickly and easily? And that's what I wanna show you in this video. At the risk of oversimplifying, let me just make sure that we're all clear about Ripple Delete and what it actually is. So I've got two clips on my timeline. This one is 16 minutes long, and this one is like 30 minutes long. But regardless of the length, what Ripple Delete is, is getting rid of an unwanted section of your timeline and moving everything over to fill the gap, as opposed to getting rid of a section of your timeline and leaving a gap. I feel like it's helpful just to break it down in the simplest terms so we understand what it is we're talking about. But again, the more important question is how is it helpful and how do we simplify the process of Ripple Delete? One scenario where the helpfulness of Ripple Delete is readily apparent is if you have a long talking head section or an interview or something like that, where somebody is pausing a lot, saying um and ah, maybe redoing whole sections, and you wanna fly through that edit really quickly. You can utilize your, your audio waveforms, and we know we can just get rid of most of these just empty spaces. If you're not using Ripple Delete, perhaps you're doing something like this. We have our blade tool here, and you can just position your mouse cursor at the end of a section, and we'll hit that and make a cut, and then we'll come to the beginning of another section, and we'll make a cut there. Now we need to switch back to our selection tool or our selection mode, highlight the section we want to delete, and delete it. That's the slow way to do it. So the much faster way to get through an edit like this using Ripple Delete looks something like this. This section at the beginning of this clip is dead. I don't need it. I'm just gonna put my playhead, Ripple Delete it. I'm gonna move to this next section, split clip, go to the beginning of the next part that I wanna keep, Ripple Delete, split clip, Ripple Delete, split clip, Ripple Delete, split clip, ripple delete. Hopefully you were able to see what was happening there and how quick and easy that was. So we're able to cut out big sections or even tiny sections of a clip. So for instance, watch my playhead, boom, right there and right there. You can edit big sections, small sections in as few key presses and mouse clicks as possible. How do we do it? So there are three tools that we need to become familiar with in DaVinci Resolve. Split clip, start to playhead, and end to playhead. Split clip, like the blade tool, makes cuts in your timeline. The difference is, is that it makes a cut where your playhead is, as opposed to the blade tool, which makes a cut wherever your cursor is. I'm gonna position my cursor where I wanna make the cut, and then I'll hit the keyboard shortcut for split clip, which is default to control or command and backslash, and you can see it makes the cut there. The benefit of the split clip is a couple things. One. If you're using the blade tool, you can only blade through one layer at a time. So if I have multiple layers on my timeline, using the blade tool, it only cuts one layer. So you can see uh, it cuts that top layer. And if I have my cursor down here, then it's gonna cut through that, you know, that layer. It cut through the audio and the video because those are linked. So it'll cut through linked clips, but it won't cut through non-linked clips. Split clip, on the other hand, as you can see, will cut through every layer on the timeline as long as nothing is selected, as long as no individual clip is selected. If you do have a clip selected, so you can see that one is selected, it's outlined in red, and you hit split clip, then it will only cut that selected clip. So a couple things to note about that. So now that we know what split clip is, the next thing we wanna know is start to playhead and end to playhead. So I have an edit here and I wanna cut out this section. So I'm gonna move my playhead to the beginning of the next section where I want to begin. And I'll hit the keyboard shortcut for start to playhead. And as you hopefully saw there, it ripple deleted the empty section that I wanted to remove from my video, which is different from say I position my playhead, make an edit, highlight, delete. End to playhead is the same thing, but in reverse. So I get to an end of the section and say, this is the last little bit that I wanna, wanna have in the clip. And I wanna get rid of this whole part right here. So position my playhead and then I'll hit the command for end to playhead. And that deleted this whole 
section and brought the next edit point over or everything else in the timeline over to the left. The default keyboard shortcut for start to playhead is control shift left bracket or command shift left bracket. And the default command for end to playhead is control shift right bracket or command shift right bracket. You might be asking why the hell are those keyboard shortcuts so complicated? I like to think that there are two kinds of editors out there. One I call the keyboard warrior who likes having both hands on the keyboard, is flying through the timeline using the arrow keys, J, K, and L, etc. So those multi-part keyboard shortcuts are not complicated. They actually make a lot of sense. The other kind of editor is what I'll call the dual wielder, who likes to have left hand on the keyboard, right hand on the mouse, for right-handers anyway. And if that's you, it will definitely make sense to modify those keyboard shortcuts. So that's what we're gonna do now. So to change those, we're gonna come up here to DaVinci Resolve and Keyboard Customization. And now that we know that they're called Split Clip and Start and End to Playhead, we know what to search for. We're gonna search Split, and we'll come down to Timeline and Split Clip. By default, again, Control plus black Backslash. You can get rid of that if you don't wanna use that by hitting this X key or just leave it and then add another command by hitting this plus icon. I like to change mine to S on the keyboard. S is already assigned to trim, toggle, slip, slide mode. Do you want to assign this keystroke? We'll hit assign. It's gonna give us a little warning icon. So we have basically two functions assigned to S, which isn't gonna work. If you click on the S key up here, it will show you that it was uh, what commands are mapped to S. So it's toggle, slip, slide mode. So now we're going to search for toggle slip slide mode, and we're gonna remove it from the keyboard command that it was mapped to. So if you like to use toggle slip slide mode, then you're gonna to need to reassign it or assign split clip to something else, it's up to you. Next, we need to search for start to playhead. That's gonna be under trim and then ripple. So start to playhead, control shift left bracket, and I like to assign mine to Q. If you come from Premiere Pro, these ripple deletes are already assigned to Q and W. So that makes a lot of sense. So I'm gonna hit plus and then type in Q. Again, we've got a conflict. So this is already assigned to view, source, timeline, viewer. That's cool. Source. There we go. Source, timeline, viewer. Hit the X button here and get rid of that keyboard shortcut. Next, we're gonna search for end to ripple and to playhead control shift right bracket i'm going to add in w damn it <laughs> that's okay so that's trim dynamic trim mode dynamic tr trim mode w delete i'm going to save as new presets call this davinci resolve tutorials hit okay so you can have multiple presets up here Click this little drop down. Um, all of your custom presets will be below this little line. All of the default presets will be above it. And we'll close that out. I hope you learned something from that. I hope that helps you get faster and more efficient in your editing. The next step, obviously, is to start utilizing Ripple Delete regardless of how complicated your timeline gets. The more layers are stacked on top of each other, video and audio, Ripple Delete is still going to be the thing that you want to do but it can be complicated to ensure that you're not messing up the timing or all of the other editing you've done on different layers. There's really no shortcut or easy way to make that happen. Unfortunately, that's why professional editors get paid a lot of money. One tool or function that you really wanna start paying attention to the more advanced you get into Resolve is the Auto Track Selector. I'm gonna link in the description a video from another creator named Auto, <laughs> Auto his name is Auto Track Selector. No, Creative Video Tips. He's made an entire video about the audio, Auto Track Selector. It's kind of an advanced video, so some of it might be a little bit complicated or complex if you were just beginning in Resolve. But the more you work in Resolve, the more those kinds of videos will start making sense. So watch it once, watch it twice, but then continually refer back to it and more and more concepts will click into place for you.